the language of the universe. But I don't understand it. Welcome back to the Math and Physics Podcast. I'm your host, Parker. And I'm Ray. And we welcome you to episode number 50, where today we have a special episode for the Big 5-0 we don't have anything too closely related to the math and physics, but today we're going to talk with a former student, or not former, aid, another student <laughs> at the University of Toronto, where Parker and I study, and uh, he is in Rotman Commerce, a commerce student studying economics as well. So, Richard, how are you today? Hey guys, first of all, thank you so much for having me here. I am very happy to be here, and I'm saying hello to everyone who's listening to this podcast, my name is Richard. Uh, I am a student at U of T. I'm in Robin Commerce, as my boys explained. <laughs> uh, I like to do YouTube on the side as well. So I'm, a, I'm like a content creator, quote unquote content creator. But yeah, thank you for having me here today. Yeah, man. yeah, no problem. It's uh, we're, we're happy that you, uh, you know, replied to our message to come <laughs> on to the podcast. Oh, of course. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, for anybody that's listening, please go and check out Richard's YouTube channel. It's just Richard Hahn on YouTube. He makes content related to uh, U of T mostly, but we are going to talk about later uh, in the podcast about, you know, topics relating to uh, YouTube and just producing content in general mm -hmm. like we do, but yeah, obviously it's not the same, not the same thing. Uh, so yeah, I initially uh, contacted you because like I've been watching your videos since ever since like first year, really. But you know, like, wow, like on Very and off because it, Damn, it just gets recommended right to here. me, you know. <laughs> true fan. Yeah, no, the YouTube algorithm doing its thing. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, like I don't know. I probably like Googled U of T, and then that just like related back to the YouTube <laughs> algorithm or something. Yeah. But yeah, I started watching your videos, and like all the way up till now, I'm just like, hey, why not? Let's uh, like link up with a fellow u of t student of content creator and i think this is definitely in terms okay let's let's be uh realistic the between like the second years at u of t right now we have the biggest podcast uh merging with the biggest youtube channel hey. at U of t. Uh, this is history <laughs> in making guys I'm, wow. in I'm kidding <laughs> That's amazing. No, we're, That's actually truly amazing. You know, it's nice. I am very humbled. I, I, I'm just going to say I'm very humbled to, you know, be around you guys, just have my audience and your audience. Just a blessing. Mm -hmm. And so if you are listening to this podcast and you are from U of T, welcome to the conversation, I guess. This is going to be <laughs> mostly a conversation for you guys, mm -hmm. because I mean, I do agree that like, even if you're not from U of T, this may be like a little bit disconnected but still like interesting, you know, because mm -hmm. every of time course. you talk about university, like a lot of people maybe are in high school right now and want to know more about university in general. So this also pertains to you guys out there. Uh, yeah. And um, I was actually so I was actually thinking like as, as you were just saying, like even if you're truly not a university student, you know, I think we have some interesting con I mean not, or not a University of Toronto student if you're any college high school like we're just going to talk about just just university life like I think we did this um we have done this before like slight slightly with a more physics student uh Matthew mm -hmm. Cater we have done that like a, one of a very original episodes quite a long time ago and I think I think that was I, liked by a lot of people because we were just talking about you know university life what we do or like what the average workload is and that's I think what Richard also specializes in on his YouTube channel right like what <laughs> yes like what we do at u of t mm -hmm. right Boom. all right Kay. so the so, first thing we did want to talk about mm -hmm. was... no before we start sorry before we start mm -hmm. uh parker i have to mention something we're, we're, we're really not good at this comment of the week oh the comment wait of don't the week. worry though like you might have noticed i was like <laughs> looking down for the whole time yeah. i was searching i was really searching and i kind of knew that i had found this but this is this is sort of a very nice comment um it's, sort it's, of. it's it's basically just a lot of <laughs> like it's 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 a lot of inquisitive questions like a lot okay. of uh, okay. you know can you explain this different parts of the universe and stuff like that mm. but basically the idea is that this guy is a more of a science guy so wait let me say his name his name is Rob Heyman and uh, he emailed us actually and he's a high school senior in Ontario he's more of a science guy but he's getting interested in math and listening to our podcast probably you know 
push that right there. The calculus episode gave me a pretty good background for my first day of grade 12 calc, which I finished. And he is applying to U of T as well. And he's like, wow. maybe I'll see you guys around. So yeah, we're definitely excited. Yeah. You know, thank if you, you, Rob. If you do, or if everyone gets the chance to go back on campus as normal uh, life, you know, mm -hmm. we'd be happy to see some <laughs> for the first time have an interaction with a podcast fan. <laughs> in yeah, real life. yeah, that'd be crazy. That'd be crazy. Wow. Yeah. Also, so, big, big, big news. Oh God. By the time this episode goes out. And actually, by the time, yeah, by, by the time this one goes out, we would have crossed 5,000 Spotify followers. So thank you, you guys. to everyone thank who, you. <laughs> who listens to our podcast and continues to listen, continues to follow us because it's, it's truly amazing. So thank you. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Yeah. So just if, you are, yeah. if you are listening to this podcast right now, make sure to follow us on, on Spotify or Apple. And if you have any questions, you can go check out our Instagram at math.physics.podcast. So mm -hmm. let's get into this episode. So the first thing I wanted to talk about with you were Richard and Rayhan. Okay. Um, was our like math experiences at U of T. And so Rayhan and I both took Math 137, which is calculus in one dimension with proofs. But Richard uh, did take a different class from what we took. And so... Mm -hmm. Richard, if you want to talk about uh, your your experience in general, and maybe you can uh, explore some topics in there. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, no, uh, I took Math One Three Three, which is M A T One Three Three. I forgot the exact name of the course, but it's a course for commerce students. So this math course is relatively easier than Math One Three Five or One Three Seven because it focuses on uh, different aspect of math. So I'm not too sure what you guys dealt with in your math classes, but mm -hmm. 133 is a full year course. It's a mixture of like, obviously calculus, but also some like finance math, if that makes sense. Oh. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we deal with like time value of money. It gives you like a very good background on the knowledge of, well, if any like raw med students are listening to this, it, it gives you a really nice background to eco 204 and eco 220 and as well as rsm 230 which are all econ and finance courses mm -hmm. and obviously those you know those courses take a lot of like math skills so it's a very good uh stepping stone but it the course itself wasn't as hard i think the course average was around like B, I, oh. if I'm not mistaken. So wait, it's wait, pretty wait, high. Wait. Yeah, a B That's is like high. a 75 plus, right? Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it, it was a it was a very good like GPA booster for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was definitely easier in the first half of the course compared to the uh, second half because first half was just basic like calculus, but second half was more focused in like econ and like finance so, so when if, you say like e, like finance related math i actually kind of do want to know like what like could you like maybe elaborate a little more on that because i want to know like what exactly yeah. do you guys deal with yeah no um just to like delve in i might be mixing up some of the things i'm learning in my second year <laughs> or my first year but uh we learned we we had a basic of lambda you know figuring because we use lambda to figure out like consumer preferences and whatnot so lambda is like a big one. Uh, another one would be like, like trying to figure out like interest rate in different time periods. Mm -hmm. Those mm -hmm. things, uh, those things relate more to like finance uh, stuff. But I guess like how to uh, calculate like yield to maturity or like rate of returns, obviously, um, dividend yields. I think those kind of math are more in 133 compared to like 137 or 135 mm -hmm. so it definitely like yeah is more on the business side so yeah those kind of math mm -hmm. yeah that's super interesting because we definitely like didn't see anything like that right? nope. like for us nope. <laughs> it's kind of like we relearned high school calculus but just a lot more rigorous i guess you can say mm. And so course, obviously we started with like limits and then derivatives and integration and then uh, like Taylor series and all that stuff. So that's really interesting that like, mm -hmm. like I, I never would have thought that there was uh, like an entire semester of a math course dedicated to talking about like financial mm -hmm. math, things like that. 
That's really yeah. interesting. And yeah. so what do you think would be your, like, what was your most difficult course that you've taken up to now? I think the most of a course uh, is equal to 20. I mean, two, 204, actually. 204, sorry. It's a course and I'm taking yeah. at the moment. Okay. It's a microeconomic theory, I think. Um, I, I don't remember the whole, um, the actual name of the course. But yeah. it's like... <laughs> It's econ, but heavy like math, like equal to 20 is more of like a theory base. It definitely does have to do with like statistics and a little bit of theory, but equal to four is I think like 80% math and like 20% theory. And it talks a little bit about finance plus math. So it's a much hard, hard version of math one through three. Mm-hmm. If, you, if you think about it that way. So like for what is because I I mean I'm I'm really interested and we were actually talking about this before we started this conversation. Yeah. We were talking a little bit about stocks and you know like financial like, and obviously a very important part about you know investing in any business yeah. is always like understanding their valuation of course. Or like you know what would the company's financial. So I guess like do you guys deal with those kind of problems? Like what is an like an example problem that you would get yeah. relating to financial math? Yeah, no, yeah. definitely. That's a good question. So some of our exam questions can be like, let's say you buy this bond at year zero. Like, let's say the interest rate at that moment is blah, blah, blah. Uh, inflation, blah, blah, blah. Like, what would that price be in like year, blah, blah, blah. That will be like a basic finance question. Uh, mm-hmm. For But for like a basic econ question, it'll be asking, <clears throat> um, here's a consumer with good one and good two. Uh, at which point of time when will this consumer prefer good one over good two if this person has like relative preferences something like that so so no it's uh no i'm just saying things i feel like i'm like the econ thing um the words makes um makes a person seem much more smarter quote unquote smarter (laughs) than i should sound but it's just the wording. It it really isn't hard. Like, no, go for so you, you, it. You can definitely uh, show off on us. Like you use no, all the no. words in your vocabulary. It's okay. I, I definitely <laughs> know that your audiences are super smart audiences. So I do not even want to try to uh, <laughs> sound smart because like, you guys are like physics and math. So no, I'm just a business school student just trying to like, you know, make, yeah. you know, make, be happy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, but awesome. those are some example questions. Oh, that's yeah, that, cool. that, that's quite interesting, though, because I've never taken like business management. Funny mm. thing, I was actually going to take like business in university. That's what I, I, was, I see that in you. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was going to apply. Uh, this was first semester of high school. I was that's what I was aiming at. I was like, okay, I'm going to go mm. into business. And then like right before the first semester ended, I completely changed my entire career path into mm. into physics. So, yeah, I would have probably been, like, exactly where you are right now if it wasn't for, like, me, like, uh, going on the U of T website and being like, hmm, hmm astrophysics. That sounds, <laughs> that sounds interesting. Yeah. The thing is, I find similarities between econ and physics because physics is, like, def- it's like a way of understanding the quote-unquote universe, right? The way things work. Mm-hmm. But econ is, like, understanding how our economy works, how our money kind of changes so i feel like both of these studies tend to focus on understanding the world slash universe if that Mm -hmm. makes sense i like to to be honest to be honest if i wasn't in a physics stream i would be definitely taking something related to economics or business Mm -hmm. or finance because i mean i've always i've always been interested in like you know the world runs on this thing that we call money that's seemingly so important and why I want to know why and you know like I want to know how it works and like there I mean I completely yeah. understand where obviously like like they're explaining two very different things but in some fundamental way they are it's sort similar. of related it's very similar yeah if mm-hmm. I can uh, go farther on this topic if you guys don't mind yeah yeah um, for sure I, I saw I'm a big fan of Elon Musk obviously being the business school student of course, of course. typical of business course. school student <laughs> he always talks about the importance of economics and physics, and he brings up the fact that they're very closely related. And with those two uh, skills, you have, you'll have a pretty good understanding of how the world works. And that's what actually um, Elon suggests to like 
like younger younger students who are growing up to like study physics and economics if possible mm -hmm. and obviously finance to understand how the system works quote mm -hmm. unquote wow. system yeah mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah ha just ha have you out. read uh, sapiens the book uh, I haven't. No, what okay. Because I was gonna, I was gonna say as Rayhan was talking about like how money is just like this thing that we made up. Like our previous guest that we've had, I think like two guests yeah. ago, was uh, Julian Robinson, who has his own podcast. But he mentioned that he like he talked about a book which is Sapiens. And ever since mm -hmm. that episode, I actually ordered the book and started oh, reading wow. it, and it's actually a very very good book and i recommend mm. everyone to read it um it's Who's by it by? it's by oh, yuval harari it's uh okay. like y u v a l h a r i r a r i anyways harari harari <laughs> yeah okay. um, harari. and basically it's 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 called like sapiens a brief history of humankind and so he starts oh, wow. from literally like when we separated from the apes and he talks about like genomes and all that stuff and then mm. into like hunter gatherer stage and the agriculture and then civilizations and all that stuff and i'm i'm still on chapter 1 where he's talking about like the cognitive revolution which is you know how we separated ourselves from being animals to more like complex psychological like um teamwork uh what's the adjective i'm looking for like uh, cooperating uh, beings, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. he talks about how um, like animals who are, you know, animals are still like intelligent, quote unquote, um, but they are like very much in the survival um, state of mind at all times. And so all they think about are things that are actually in front of them. And mm -hmm. what, what uh, made humans actually um, become more complex is the fact that they were able to imagine things that didn't actually exist. And, you know, clear examples of that, mm. like, you know, this might be like a little bit controversial, but like religion, for example, mm -hmm. and also um, uh, like companies, companies. Right. He gave this example that like a company is not actually real in any, any shape or form. Yeah. Right. Like if, and he gave, he also gave this um, uh, like explanation he said, if every single person that works at a company were to get fired, the company would still be an entity, right? But, you know, where does that entity live? It's just in people's minds, right? And right. then also, if, if every single, like, service or product that that company has created were to be completely destroyed, that company would still exist in our minds, right? And right. The only thing that like can dissolve a company is like legal action, right? So let's say mm -hmm. a judge says like, oh, like disband this entire company. Um, um, how did it, okay, yeah, right. So if the judge like dismisses like an, an entire company, the buildings and the people and the products are still there. And so in some sense, like the company still exists, even if like legally, the judge says like the company doesn't exist i don't know and where so, the legal i mean you're making you're making a good point i don't know why you had to bring the legal situation into it like <laughs> i don't understand how that no, no i, I, I understand that's the only it. thing that can like destroy the concept right that's what you're getting at. yeah exactly oh exactly. okay okay but Continue. the 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 entire point of that is that like the thing is we have this entire world that is living in our minds, like countries, wow. borders, uh, companies, like everything, like like titles, like jobs and all that stuff. It lives in our mind. If you were to like, let's say an animal, you were to put yourself in the mind of an animal, they mm -hmm. just see the real world that's in front of them. And they have no idea of this entire thing that's going on that lives in our like level of, of cognition, right? Why do you think That's humans get stressed so more, so much more than animals? Because <laughs> at the end of the day, animals are just living their best life, mm -hmm. right? They're just, mm -hmm. just relaxing in the world, the world that's right in front of them, as you were saying. But humans have all this work, all this, you know, as if you were giving the example of a job, you always have deadlines, certain things to do. As you said, all these constructs that are in your mind. And at the end of the day, it's so important for people like us because... 
who's going to really advance the civilization on earth? Is it going to be like the lions and the cheetahs in the jungle or is it going to be us? I'm pretty sure it's going to be us. You know, like, yeah. that's, that, like that's, that's an important point, you know? Yeah. The, the reason I brought that up though is just because like money and economics – Mm-hmm. is very much like a mental construction but it's such an important mental construction yeah, because it's, without it's it important. the world would not run it exist. like the yeah. basic most basic uh art of you know getting something for something else like trading is the most simple example of where economics comes in like if let's say i have a basket of bananas and i want i don't know a basket of apples like how many bananas are worth one apple or something like that you know like that's all like how do people value it and all these questions come in where economics plays such a crucial role wait this is actually an interesting uh something i wanted to ask you is that like in our physics courses Often when we learn a con like like a theory or whatever, they'll present mm-hmm. to us like the history of the theory and mm-hmm. then present to us this, the theory and how it like connects to different areas. And so do they right. do the same thing in, in economics? Right? Do they present like the history of how something came about and then teach you like the actual details of it? Yeah, no, we first start off by I guess it's a little bit similar, but we use case studies. So, for example, for if we are learning about some concept in economics or finance, we have like this formula, right? Because the formula was already constructed and that's what we've been ta- like teaching for like the 50 years or mm. even more. Like, I, I don't know how long <laughs> it's been around for. But, uh, yeah, we get this formula and our professor explains how it works. We just plug in some numbers and then we go into like actual real life, like excerpts from like years ago. So... I guess it's the history of those um, like financial concepts or economical concepts that we're studying, but um, we look at more of like the case study and this can relate to like marketing as well. Cause if we learn about a marketing theory, we definitely look into like cases, right? Like mm-hmm. if we're talking about like, uh, like expansion, like we may look at like Starbucks and how they expanded too quickly and that like led them to, stalling and we talk uh, about history slash case studies from many years ago or even things that are happening right now as well because business business and finance has a very close relationship with what is going on right now at this moment Mm -hmm. like the stock market today tomorrow yeah Mm -hmm. so it has to do with a wide range of time frame i think yeah and did you ever um learn about like why compound interest became a thing or something like that you know uh not to we i guess that's a thing we don't question why or mm. where it mm. came from that's we more just, of like, a physics thing it. that's more of a physics yeah. trait the question like of why. those like yeah. those like philosophical thinking of like why i don't think we get that a lot in business mm-hmm. courses we say okay that's this is how we compute it how are we gonna like generate profit with that how are we going to use it in real life and use it to our advantage i feel like because like the way business schools work i feel like most of our studies are very much applied Mm -hmm. to our real Mm -hmm. life i think though i think the idea of compound interest though i think is a very like a basic idea that stems directly from like the moment you invent something like simple interest would be the more, cause that would probably be the first thing that people thought of. Like you have a <laughs> principal amount and you accumulate interest on that amount. But then I guess when some Einstein discovered that, Hey, what if the uh, interest uh, collected becomes the new principal amount? I right. guess that's kind of, that stems directly from the idea of simple interest. And I think yeah. that would actually be quite an interesting question to know, like how, like or, where it came from. Yeah, yeah. where it came from. Yeah. That's actually because, a pretty cool because question. I'm, I'm guessing, like, well, I'm not even guessing. This is a fact. Like, at one point we didn't have money, and then at of some course. point yeah. we had money, and then at some point that money started becoming more money on its own. How did that even play out in, in the first place? Like, yeah. Wait. What? No, there's no way. What? The first written evidence of compound interest interest dates the twenty four hundred BC. What? 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 Wait, I thought that's gonna be like sense. no, that's a few hundred years sense. ago. What? Wait, did it did it pay with like bananas then? If you give me one banana, today, <laughs> no, no, I, the interest more rate was twenty percent. There's a whole there's a whole interest rate. <laughs> the banana. <laughs> wait, wait, what? 
the banana monetary system. The, ba- <laughs> the banana system. <laughs> no, no. Like, I'm pretty sure they had like currency back in that. Time, I mean, right? I, I mean to be honest, like again, I am. I don't think any of us are really qualified to talk about the history of nah. all of this. <laughs> yeah. So I guess we're just guessing here. We're just playing a guessing game. But no, yeah, I like, mean, I can't really find. But I mean, uh, just a simple search off Google, Wikipedia, actually. Yeah. Compound interest starts in 2400 BC. Wow. Oh, wow. That would no, be. I've been in business school for like two years now, but I never learned it. I, I, okay. I guess no one, as you never. said, no one really asks, right? No one really asks, like, oh, where did this idea come from, mm-hmm. right? I feel like that's more of a like science or mm-hmm. philosophical. Yeah, thinking, more, more so. philosophical mm-hmm. for sure. More, yeah, for, more yeah. philosophical. You know where all of this because i think like with with a compounding interest as parker as, as you were saying you know like the idea of money probably also started you know in a similar era because like sim- mm-hmm. like interest probably started immediately when people are like hey let me borrow some money from you well depending on how long you take it charge me extra money you know like that probably yeah. was invented right after the concept of money was invented or loans or something like that right Hmm. Yeah. yeah no i definitely agree with you yeah hmm. it would be so cool just to have like an expert just like join the call and be like oh this is exactly why yeah. <laughs> i would i would, like, I would want it's to actually know a that. really interesting question though yeah i actually yeah. would want to know that because, what if we what if in the yeah. future we get like we get like a an econ professor from u of t on the podcast we can ask I him mean, a bunch a, of uh it's a possibility like, crazy yeah, it's, a, it's a possibility shout out to all the uft professors here <laughs> yeah <definitely>. talking <laughs> about econ professors i'm pretty sure parker knows this but in first year i went so as as a breath requirement yeah. i had taken <laughs> an economics course it was like right. econ 102 it was it was an online course and you must be like wait mm. all courses are online no, no no i'm talking about first year <laughs> so that when all classes were in person this was one online course and because of that, like, I didn't really go to a lot of them because I'm like, I don't need online courses because obviously a year ago, it online courses weren't as big of a thing as it right now. But right. more importantly, <clears throat> I took that course because of something very fundamental, because I had recently taken an interest in the stock market. And, you know, I I'd, I'd like this idea of investing my money and, you know, growing it much to much larger, you know, gains than <laughs> possibly just keeping it at a, uh, in a bank. Yeah. Sorry, what were you saying? No, you're like, I, I took an interest in having money and growing it to larger amounts. <laughs> no, to larger amounts than funny. compared to the bank is what I was okay. finishing my sentence as. Yeah, then compared to the bank, I'm like, why would I keep it in there when I can keep it in something that's making me a higher percentage? And I always wanted to learn about, you know, the different ideas behind how that worked and stuff. So I took an economics course and it taught me absolutely nothing. Like it was, <laughs> it taught me about, I mean, I guess I, I did not know what I was going into because I, because like it mm-hmm. taught me about, you know, basic supply and demand and you know, how like goods exchanges and all these questions that I didn't really, you know, have a very big interest towards at that time. But like, you know, as yeah. I'm advancing, like, I'm like, you know what, some of those questions that were asked in there are actually pretty cool, pretty important. <laughs> That I realized the later. important thing is I feel like, you know, when we think about hackers, we think about computer science, right? We always think about that image, the, the most optimal image of like a study. Let's say like if we, thunk, if we think about like Mark Zuckerberg, for example, we think about this like genius sitting in his bedroom creating Facebook in Harvard, right? That's that's what we think about. But we don't think about the fundamental steps that he needed to take in order for him to get to that point. And I think uh, Rayan brought up like a very important theory, like a uh, process of economics is that when you're in business school, you're not going to like start off with like learning about, oh, this is Tesla stock. This is going to go up, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like, this is Apple stock. This is going to go up, blah, blah, blah. We don't start with that. We start with the basic knowledge. It's like, how do we like calculate like bonds how do we calculate money in different times to be honest i would have enjoyed that i would have really enjoyed that but none of that was like none of that was intro but that in order to get there we need to learn about supply and demand how the market's gonna move how how Mm. the market's gonna get influenced by inflation so i feel like that ties into i like to think about this with like computer science because i wanted to go into coding thinking like oh i'm gonna be like mark zuckerberg (laughs) sitting in my dorm room creating like (laughs) facebook but, you know, there's so many steps in order for you to, like, get yeah. to that optimal level, right? So, mm-hmm. I feel like that's the same way as, like, business school. Yeah, You're not gonna I, get to... I want to jump the horse. Like, I want to go ahead yeah. a lot faster than I want to learn the base. I yeah. just want to know. You're not going to. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, you're not going to be the wolf of Wall Street before going <laughs> to, you know, before starting all this econ and finance. Like, I think that's one thing I want to point out. It's not going to be all like, you know, money and all that <laughs> stuff. You like, just painted the picture in my head where it's like first day of uh, business school. You walk into the lecture and the prof is like, this is GME. You should buy this <laughs> stock right here. <laughs> GameStop. No, that's not it. Yeah, game to the moon. To the moon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a that, yeah. that's a classic. Yeah, I wanted. I also wanted to know, um, like, why did you pick U of T specifically? Yeah, <clears throat> um, I talked about this a little in my uh, in one of my YouTube videos. So, if anyone's listening to this and want to know why I picked U of T, you guys can go check that out. But I actually applied to UBC and U of T both as a business school um, like student. So UBC, they have Sother, and in U of T, we have Robin. <clears throat> and the reason why I picked Robin over Sother is first because of international reputation, because I wanted to open my doors into not just um, like working and studying in Canada, but somewhere abroad as well. And to have like a name of Robin, it was a little bit better. It's, it's, it's better than having, obviously not to like, like mm-hmm. completely like you know like like Sother is a very 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 prestigious uh business school like don't get me wrong but i picked robin because it i saw it more towards my future secondly um toronto i believe is the second biggest metropolitan city in north america next to new york i don't know no. how uh, how old this data like this information is but i was told that about like three years ago i maybe you guys probably hasn't it probably hasn't changed it probably hasn't that. changed why i don't but, know why it would but... yeah bigger city equals bigger networking events bigger True. opportunities right so mm-hmm. and if you're in business school one of the first thing you learn is that sometimes networking and those opportunities are much more valuable than getting a 4.0 GPA in your high school. I'm in your in your school. Mm-hmm. After hearing that in high school, I that's that was like a defining factor. I was like, I need to go to Toronto. I need to like go and meet the people there and see how it's actually like in Toronto. Like mm-hmm. if you think about it, like the TSX is in like Toronto, right? It, it, mm-hmm. It's not Vancouver. It's, it's mm-hmm. Toronto. Also because so, Toronto is the financial capital of Canada, so like there is see, a yeah, lot. I, yeah, there's a lot of there, there's a lot here. of business yeah. going on yeah, here. So exactly. I was like, if I want to study business, I'm gonna be at like the hub of everything. Right? Yeah, so, I get that. Yeah, um, and that, and yeah, I think those are the two biggest factors mm-hmm. why I chose U of T. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, if you don't mind me asking, like, where are, are you from? Canada? No, I'm uh, I'm from Korea. Actually, I moved to Canada about seven years ago. I actually landed in Manitoba, uh, Winnipeg, Manitoba, if wow. you guys know. Uh, it's in the prairies. I went to high school there. Shout out to all my, you know, friends in Manitoba. <laughs> um, but yeah, and I moved to university. I, I moved to Toronto for university. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So so what, what was your first impression of like uh, Frosh Week? You just get to Toronto and mm. you, you get to this huge campus and you're like, wow, yeah. like, what, what were you thinking? No. So many people ask me this because like Toronto is like a big city compared to like Winnipeg, but I am from Seoul, which is another big city. So I was already used to like a big city life. So the big city didn't really get me, but the Frosh Week and party, very fun times. But uh, it definitely did remind me of like, high school though because like in high school like we have parties i guess like university parties are on the next level for sure no also also like uh oh so so do you believe so just just to follow up you do believe that university like life like as in like the like the academic part of it you think it's like similar to high school like the Um, like the difficulty level the stress level or like what because, no way. No, no because way. you said it's similar to high school, so I'm like, wait, I need to no, clarify no, no. what similar that statement. Similar to high school, as in like the party scenes and the vibe. Oh, okay. The vibe, the like vibe. The, the friend vibes, right? I thought yeah. like when I got to university, I would have like, oh, like very strict friends who are like, oh, oh yeah. like I'm into like like business. I want to get yeah. to like, you know, like. But no, they were all very chill friends. Mm-hmm. Although they're very intelligent friends, um, they were very chill, and obviously you guys as well. You guys are. Very chill, but you guys are absolutely 
amazing and intelligent. Yeah, so. exactly. Like, imagine how lucky Parker is to have someone like me, you know. Like, <laughs> he's, he's so happy. Like, oh, my God, I found such a good friend at UFC, you know. Like, it's just I think, Richard... no, you, guys, you guys are friend goals. You guys are friend goals. <laughs> Richard, I, I find it interesting that you bring that up because as – a lot of people know that uh, maybe want to go to U of T or already at U of T. It has this reputation that like everyone is just like a studying like person yeah. day in and day out, just in their dorm room studying all day. But I think like new students that come to U of T will be surprised at how many people are like, very sociable but at the same time still on that level of intelligence where it's like yeah. it's like of course like at, at some point like the stereotype does hold that everyone in your class is going to be really smart yeah but there is like we're all like normal just normal high students. school students that's, <laughs> that that's exactly into the, what i want lecture. to show in my video i feel like one of the big key mm -hmm. if i quote unquote success to my videos were I think a lot of people had this misconception of U of T and like U of Tears, but in my videos, I try my best to like show in my vlogs how much fun we have, kind of. Mm -hmm. Like we we are like normal students who wants to have fun. We're normal university students, but we're also, as uh, Parker mentioned, we're very hardworking students. Exactly. Like that. So, that, that that's an important distinction that I'm not because a lot of people like you know, especially in Canada, like people mm -hmm. who are not watching this from Canada might not really get this reference but especially in Canada I think there's this huge stereotype against people who go to a University of Toronto where you know they're like oh they're you know the um, what's the word I'm looking for like very um strict. you know like narrow mind like 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 very strict like like okay. they're not like loose you know like they're not approachable as very Parker tense, mentioned like tense. they're not social mm -hmm. like that's what people think but that's just far from the truth like if anyone yeah. knows me they should know that I'm not and like I'm the opposite very much of an introvert. So like, you know, there are people like us at U of T. So it's, that's it's, the thing. I feel yeah. like our personality and our work ethic are two different things. Like mm -hmm. our personality are like we're very much normal students who want to have fun. But when it comes down to work, we grind it through. That's, yeah. that's, that's the difference. Definitely. Yeah. To be honest, um, I, I think I have mentioned this before that um, in quarantine, like uh, no, uh, lockdown or whatever, like the situation we're in right now. Like, I feel that online school, the biggest advantage that it has posed is the fact that because you're alone, like, because you're just doing it in your room, just online school, you just naturally work a lot harder and a lot more because you're mm -hmm. by yourself. And I think that's yeah. an, so like, I guess, I guess I, I can, I can form a question here. Like, how has like your quarantine life in, in your, in your program been different from your in-person? Because you're lucky enough like us, you've had an in-person and an online right. experience unluckily right. unluckily like the people coming in right now don't have that opportunity right but like for you for example what do you think the the difference is or like how, I agree how with we treated you. it yeah i agree with you i think a lot of people like to just hate on online school but i'm actually a, i don't mind online school because it definitely saves a lot of time there's no distraction as uh, Rayhan said true so we can really focus on our work and that that really gave me an opportunity to grow my YouTube channel, just grow my side interests, do more research on the things I really want to like research just outside of my schoolwork. Mm -hmm. And I am like a person who likes to study alone when I, when I like to like study. And given that there's no opportunity to like hang out with my friends and go to parties, a lot of my time went into like doing my work. So I definitely feel I'm much more productive compared to like, pre-pandemic world mm -hmm. i think we can kind of guarantee that the uh, average gpa of last semester like of u of t of u of mm -hmm. the whole average gpa was higher than last year i, I don't agree. know about I, that. I think that's a fact because i i, I just think that's a fact that. i think that okay because a lot of the course averages like that i'm seeing you know like uh, some some posts on reddit and stuff like that like of course there are courses that are stricter but on average as you know as richard as you were saying like because people are isolated because they don't have you know 50 other people in the class to distract them like you're a lot more focused and like you're always you know you're always at home you're not doing anything. You're not going out. You're not partying. I do you think you're generalizing a little bit? Because I am. Of course, I'm generalizing. I'm, I'm literally saying trouble. average. I am generalizing. I'm completely generalizing. There but, are extremes, of course, but I'm saying 
it's higher. I'm not saying it's a 4.0. I'm not saying it's a 3. I'm saying it's higher, possibly, I think, than what it was last year. I don't know if you have year. any, any like, hard no, data to back that it's up. It's my opinion. It's my opinion. I think. I think. But <clears throat> just to just to build off of that, I think we can we need to, like, uh, touch upon the very flip side of the coin. I think a lot of students like to hate on online school because it's mm-hmm. very, very hard to stay motivated during these times. And I felt that what, like by myself too. Like sometimes when you're just sitting in your room like seven hours straight and you just look out and it's already nighttime. Yeah, I feel mind. like, what yeah. am I doing? I feel like a domesticated animal. <laughs> yeah. I just stay in my room, eat food, study, make videos what making videos is definitely like like my refresher but sometimes it's very easy to lose mm, control of your life and i think that's where a lot of the challenges of online school comes from Mm -hmm. so if to everyone who's listening to this if you're going through like a very hard time because of online school i'm sure you're not the only one maybe rayhan and i are the small minorities but I, i heard so many stories based on the whole lack of motivation, um, just all the negative things. So, mm-hmm. and um, I was gonna ask. Wait, no, I definitely forgot. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> um, in terms of your your YouTube channel, mm-hmm. like you're very similar to us, right? Like we we just like started posting like content. Cause you're yeah. posting videos, we're posting podcasts and things like that. Um, but where do you really see your channel going in the future? Yeah, that's a very good question. So I started off as a U of T college YouTuber. That was like my main theme. And then I branched off to more of a general college YouTuber, like channel, general college YouTube vlog, kind mm-hmm. of like college vlogging. I think that's my that was my second phase. And I think I'm reaching... Like for something new. So I guess my final vision, I'm not too sure what my final vision is, but I just want to do whatever, what I want to create at that moment. I don't want to be like, be stuck in like one area. I want to mm-hmm. like try out different things. And I think that's what my audience, that's that's the reason why my audience are following me, right? Cause like they want to see like what I do with my life, like what I want to talk about and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I think, that's where I'm going with. I think you guys talked about this similar behind the scenes, but you guys also talked about, you know, wanting to branch out to more things rather than just what you guys are creating. So I think that's, we, we have like a similar um, direction of our content. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you are listening to this podcast right now, you obviously have noticed that, you know, we're just talking about like, everyday uh stuff right we're not necessarily Mm -hmm. talking about math and physics and so definitely let us know on our instagram or in like the youtube comments or whatever if you would like more podcasts like this one right where we just talk about like our experiences maybe i don't know like some some stories like how rehan and i met things like that right that's a dope story um because like obviously when it comes to podcasts joe rogan is like the podcast right and he is really like not limited to anything right he will have Mm -hmm. anyone on his podcast and literally talk about anything and like i'm not saying we're completely going to change our entire podcast absolutely not obviously our main like our careers right our livelihoods are math and physics Mm -hmm. and so and we are of course passionate about math and physics and Mm so the podcast is still going to be the math and physics podcast. <laughs> Very much so. But I'm Very saying, so. you know, once in a while, we just have an episode like this one where we just talk about anything. So yeah, definitely let us know if you want more episodes like this one. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, that goes out to say, yeah, <clears throat> I'm definitely not going to like change dramatic. I think I'm going to stay as a college YouTuber, but I agree with you guys. I'll maybe like one or two videos can be about anything I want to talk about. Yeah, so like I'll definitely be yeah, the college ver- like expert. Variety, you know, like variety. Because mm-hmm. sometimes, mm-hmm. sometimes people are, you know, okay, like especially because we are right now at episode number 50, right? So people, mm-hmm. at least like the listeners who are listening, have, you know, already listened for quite some time. They kind of already know who we are, you know, almost. Yeah. Like, because we share here and there, like every episode, they understand a little more about us. So, so like the idea is that as they're understanding more of us, we are like a little, we have more freedom to like 
you know, discuss yeah. openly with like with you, for example, something that we've we've never really done like a casual, complete casual episode like this before. And, you know, it's really exciting. It's really interesting because for any university student out there, they can compare their experiences to ours, like in math and, you know, economics, for example. And any, you know, aspiring university students, like if you're in high school, for example, this is going to help because we're just talking about like the, the workload and how if you like at the end of the day, if you think about it, yes, it's harder, but you're also, I think a big thing about university and I'm kind of getting off, but I think a big thing about university is you're also getting older and people don't mm-hmm. realize that like, because you're in high school and everyone's like, oh, high school, university is going to be like high school or, or will it be like high school? Well, it won't because like you're maturing with what you're working on. And as you mature, I believe like you're, the way you look at what you're studying changes. You know, like I looked at physics personally like very differently two years ago than I do now. Like, you know, I, I look at it more like career wise, like, you know, what is the what are the possible paths? Two years ago I'm just like, yo, I just really like this topic, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> so like yeah, there's a difference there. Just to come back to the topic of content creation, yeah. I think content creation is all about really building relationship with each audience, whoever is listening to whoever's watching my videos. I just wanna create like a special relationship with them, right? I like I, that's how I see my viewers, and that's how I think of my relationship with my viewers. So, as you said, as you put out more podcasts, your viewers will be able to understand you more, and that's the whole uh, reason why I'm making videos, mm-hmm. right? I want to be able yep. to like share my stories, connect with them better, uh, and just build this amazing community. So, I think you did a really good job on explaining like our responsibility and role as a quote unquote uh, content creators. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what has been like, I don't know, because this is obviously a hard question to answer if you were to ask it back at us, but maybe what was your favorite video that you've ever produced? That's a good question. Um, Yeah, no. Maybe just like a a memorable one. Yeah, memorable one. I think, yeah, I definitely remember. So uh, my friend, uh, Jack, he was my president in my my Robin club because Robin have their own club. And he was a president and I was a freshman and I was an intern of that club. And I got to really connect with this brilliant, the smartest guy I think I ever met in my life. I've seen and, that video. <laughs> and I made that video and that video was my first viral video. So like I I didn't make that video because I didn't think it was going to go viral. Well, I kind of thought it was going to go viral, but I mainly did it because I really wanted to hear my friend's story. He's now studying at Harvard Law. Um, congrats to him. But like making that video and being able to like hear his story and like my channel like really grabbing attention from people was a very cool experience because in march i i saw the statistic like about two days ago but last year around february i was getting 100 views per month in march of last year i was getting 1400 views but in april when i posted that i got seventy two thousand views in one month oh my <laughs> Yeah, so it was an exponential growth. So just seeing that really reminded me of like how grateful to like to be where I'm at today and to have my amazing audiences who are there to support me and those of who to to everyone who helped out with my videos and especially to Jack who was, you know, the first one who helped me out with my video. Just really grateful and gratitude. That's awesome. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's an awesome, awesome story. And I did actually see that video, which is actually a great video, by the way. <laughs> Not you. only Thank was you. it popular, it was a really good video. And uh, yeah, he's a, an absolute brilliant guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know if Rayhan, you, you're familiar, but like, oh, I'm pretty sure guy. he had like a 4.0 all the way yeah. through. Yeah, uh, GPA. Oh, 4.0 my. GPA from first year to fourth year all what? the way through. Yeah. No, the video is called the Interviewing the Smartest Guy at U of T. It's on my channel if you guys want to check it out. But it, he's a brilliant guy. I even made it to three-part series. Damn, he just, like, this guy. It, it, 
Straightforward. He just he single handedly carried my channel from <laughs> fourteen hundred views to set. Well, with that video, it really did pop off all my other videos too. So,、mm -hmm. just really blessings and to be able to know such a guy and to be able to like just talk to him is an absolute blessing.、Mm -hmm. Is there、awesome. any like? Is there any quote that you remember him saying, like something like super <laughs> philosophical and smart? I think this was like behind the camera,、mm -hmm. but he told me like, like bunch of stuff that really inspired me to like work harder. Cause、um, I'm humble to say that I like me and him went through some similar thing. There were like some similar ideas and things that we kind of think alike. But on camera, I think he talked about how there's multiple ways to get to where you want to be. You can, you know, sometimes go around to get it, or you can take the B line. But be patient with it and just follow the process. I feel like that was like a big theme of the whole video series. So that's one takeaway. Awesome, awesome. So yeah, man. I mean, understanding, understanding, like you know, the basics of. Especially, so I'm assuming he was in a business program, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. was in business. So, so like, I think, like, it's like I think that is an amazing connection that you just have. Like,、mm -hmm. you, like you have this opportunity. Like you have this person that clearly now is in Harvard Law. Probably,、mm -hmm. you know, you never know where this connection is going to take you. You know, like twenty years、yeah. from now, maybe you're like, hey, I need a really good lawyer or something. I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm just thinking of things. But like, yeah. And especially like talking about, you know, I'm trying to like. Like getting back to how Toronto is like the financial hub. Have、mm -hmm. you, like, ha how has been, how has your experience been in the financial hub? Like networking. Like, has it? Yeah. You, do you have any like there, memorable stories or something you would want to share? Yeah. No. There are some like I met some crazy, crazy people through like networking and obviously starting my YouTube channel. There were some amazing, talented people who reached out to me, which I'm very thankful about. But in person things, I think、um, just looking at all my friends that I met and close with in first years, and how we're、uh, growing and seeing the things that they're doing, is like the most amazing thing. Like、mm -hmm. there, I could go into stories about like meeting like some very like、um, how should I say very intelligent people, but. I guess to me the most shocking factor is like my friends and I are changing so fast. If I think about it, like thinking back to like a year ago, we were completely different like people,、mm -hmm. and that to me is the most shocking factor of the whole Toronto being the hub of financial industries and whatnot. I think the students who study and who are in those sectors tend to grow faster. I'm tempted to say faster. Than other students in different areas.、Hmm. And so, what would be like a typical weekend of a like a first year in person Rotman student? Weekend. Um, <clears throat> we like to if there's no obviously if there's no exams or projects to do. Uh, for me personally, I went out with my friends to you know bubble tea places、Big、or.、Classic. Yeah, or nothing like crazy. But if there are parties, we'll definitely go to parties. But I think most weekends we're working on projects、uh, and exams together. There's a lot of group assignments in、uh, Rotman, so I think weekends were mostly when people were free. So a lot of group meetings during the weekend, definitely. Oh, and、uh, interviews, interviews during some time,、uh, coffee chats. Yeah, coffee chats during weekends、wow. were a good thing too. Yeah. Do you know about、um, Monkey Sushi? <laughs> oh yeah, I order from them all the time. Oh my, I still remember. So Monkey Sushi, oh my god. So they had this deal for maybe、okay. I think it was like it was two, a while, three weeks, or like a month maybe. Yeah. Where it was two dollar rolls, and they delivered it. Uber Eats. Yeah. Two dollars for six、What? pieces of sushi. Yeah. And、That's、I am not、insane. joking. I ate dinner for six bucks for like a whole two weeks. I'm like as partner. <laughs> no, I think monkey no, they, sushi they was have, like, every day or every other day. They have killer deals. Like I order from them all the time because they have one one plus one sales all the time.、Mm. Like they, it's like, amazing. Shout out to them. 
Like, yeah, shout out to, like, I love it. I just love it. It's and, amazing. And last year, we would always go and get their, like, all-you-can-eat uh, dinner deals and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And oh I, remember, I remember one time we went. <laughs> I think we, we would always go, like, because at, at Innis, there's, like, different floors that are separated. Okay. Innis is like... our as our residence, <clears throat> yeah. by the way. In, last, in, in, in first okay, year, okay. like, Parker and I were at the same residence, and it was called Innis College or Innis Residence. So, yeah, right. continue. And so we had, like, obviously, you over the, f- the first couple of weeks, you find your friends within mm-hmm. your, your, your residence. Mm-hmm. And so there was a group of us. I think we were, like, we were, like, eight, maybe. I think, yeah. and so every every like now and again we'd be like, "Yo, let's just all go to Monkey Sushi <laughs> just because like it's Friday or whatever." <laughs> and so so we'd fun. go to Monkey Sushi. We would literally like fill the table with sushi. <laughs> we used to be the oh bank my. center table. It used to be like <laughs> ten of us just oh sitting God. around a table. It was amazing. We used to own the whole restaurant. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. Rayan and uh, Parker, we should definitely go out when uh, COVID is oh, over. Oh, yeah, like, sure. To be honest, 100%. when COVID gets over or like when this stuff gets over is just such a common phrase right now. Like <laughs> I remember using this phrase like maybe last May, like all the way last <laughs> yeah. May. When you know, I'm like, yo, over. whenever all this stuff's over. We'll hang out. Whatever no, the stuff's actually, because like I, I like, want to like make like a YouTube video with you guys, and obviously, uh, as uh, you guys are into stocks as well, like just eat sushi or whatever, chicken. Yeah. I, I love chicken as well. We can actually and just, do like, that. Yeah, and talk about stocks and like maybe like do our like YouTube videos or whatever. Yeah. Maybe like live stream too. You know, to be like, honest, who knows? Yeah. Who knows? So pre conversation, like pre podcast recording, like Richard Parker and I were talking about you know just stocks, cryptocurrencies, mm-hmm. equities, like just just you know investments basically, and that's where yeah. also like my questions about investments were coming in. And like I think, yeah, we can definitely have that conversation on uh, on like a YouTube channel for sure. That's yeah, that's no, it'll, it'll be because like it'll tie in, tie right in yeah. with my channel because exactly like, my audience already knows that I'm a business school student. Exactly, I talk a lot about like you know U of T life and college life, and maybe we can have an episode where we talk about you know interviewing um, my fellow physics students. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Something like that. For yeah, sure. That we can think good. about it. Um. One one thing I was going to say is that, yeah, I haven't been to campus in a while. Like for mm-hmm. your, like for anyone listening, I, I, I'm in Ottawa right now, which is the capital oh, of, uh, of Canada. Canada and yeah. um, it's about like four and a half hours away from Toronto. <laughs> and I decided to stay home this year, obviously, because I didn't really see the point in paying for rent and all that stuff while school was online. And so next year, you know... <laughs> If this is all over, I'm going to be back in Toronto. And Mm -hmm. um, I know that they were renovating front campus, which I'm super excited to see. No, it's not going to be done. It's not going to be Um, done. So if anyone's wondering how the campus looks like during the pandemic, God, there I did like a campus tour in one of my videos. So you guys can go look at that. But uh yeah it said that it's gonna be done in like two years they no. say. two years <laughs> yeah wait what are they no. exactly renovating i actually haven't there so you know the king circle right where yeah. we had the club fair yeah it, it's barricaded with like like ugly fences because they're what? like digging holes you saw that right wait one minute yeah you wait saw that. you saw I, that wait i know about the fences wait no, they're digging like holes in there, man. Yeah, because no, because I actually paving. go to U of T. Like, I go to campus pretty often, and I'm so confused. I'm like, wait, I don't have I no, seen cause, this? Because because they're taking off the road, right? They're making yeah. it a pedestrian <clears throat> thing. Yeah, and then oh, they're I, apparently I they're know. building like a underground like parking spots or whatever. Oh. Parking? What oh too. my god, that would be so useful. That would be. Would, so, I mean, I guess what I, heard. Cool. I mean, I guess a lot of people probably don't use cars though at university. So there are a lot, Actually, there are a lot of people. There, yeah. There's a lot of people. You'd be surprised. I mean, because yeah. I'm because I'm just questioning, like, why? I mean, why not? Why just not use a subway or something like, or like a tram oh, or something like that? Like, those no, are so much like, better. I think it's for people who like drive like Lamborghinis. Like their <laughs> car maybe got like yeah. damaged or something. No, so I actually know. Like, yeah, underground yeah. parking. Yeah, yeah, yeah because mean, near like near like McLennan, <laughs> like the 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 building that we have our physics classes at. There are always yeah. some crazy cars there. Man. Yeah, There's no, it's 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 definitely cars. It's, it's, a, it's insane. An, it's a car show. Like I see like Literally. Tesla, Lamborghinis, and like Audis and whatnot. There's it's some crazy. phenomenal. Yeah, cars. I don't know whose car this is, 
but I would see it so many times. It's literally, it was a Jaguar and the paint on it was like, was like a pearl. Like it was white. Wow. It, it was like a white paint, but it was like, it was like green and purple and pink. Like when you walked past it, it would like shine in like wow, in all yeah. these crazy colors. And I was like, <clears throat> this is like the most insane car I've ever seen, like parked in front of my lecture hall. <laughs> that is, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, there's crazy. some pretty high tech cars, man. Like that, that that entire area is like you know, is is perfect for it. And I guess I guess the parking lot would be advantageous if we you know, if those cars go there. But like, let's see, let's see. I'm excited to see what it's gonna become. Yeah, 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 definitely. for sure. Yeah. So we're coming up on an hour now. So I mm -hmm. think this is a good time to mm -hmm. end the podcast. Of course. And so yeah, if you are listening to this podcast right now make sure to hit the follow button on Spotify or oh. Apple or Go anywhere else <laughs> anywhere else that you are listening to this. If you're watching us on YouTube right now, you can hit the subscribe button and also the like button. And while you're at it, go check out Richard Hahn's YouTube channel <laughs> and follow yeah. him. Um, other than that? Uh, comment, uh, uh, comment, not, ep okay, I guess, I guess you can always comment episode requests. That's always, that's always something we accept or mm -hmm. email us. And always we I mean, I think we've been always, you know, good with the replying and the comments and everything. But uh, we have, interestingly enough, oh, we should probably mention this. Okay, so obviously this is going to be dropping, like the episode is going to be dropping a lot later than when we're recording it today. But uh, right. we did record, uh, we, we did an IGTV live episode, like a, not episode, oh, wow. but like a live thing, Parker and I. And I think that was really interesting. So we're thinking about doing that more. So, you know, go follow us on Instagram, too, because, like, nowadays, like, we we actually answered, like, there were some people there, you know? We actually <laughs> answered some questions, you know? Wow. They were just asking us random questions, like, you know, about, about university, about our likes, dislikes, stuff like that. that so, yeah, fun. go follow us mm -hmm. on Instagram, too. All right. Wow. And, uh, nice guys. Yeah. No, like, congrats, has... you guys, on the 50th episode, 5,000 followers, just everything Thank just you, 555. Um, <laughs> yeah. Happy to be here. Yeah. Maybe uh yeah, no, if you guys want me to back here again, I'll be happy to. Yeah, for uh, sure. For sure. Best wishes on your podcast and to everyone who listened to this, thank you so much for listening to, you know, yeah, uh, me talk and my my friends talk. But thank you guys. Part two yeah. on uh part two on Richard Hahn's YouTube channel, talking about <laughs> stocks, <laughs> investing <Coming> and <laughs> all that kind of stuff. Coming eating in, while like, eating sushi. Teacher. While eating, While eating sushi. sushi, we got we got to do that. Maybe it'll be like a live stream thing. Maybe yeah, we, we got to do that. We got to do that. We got to do something like that for sure. Yeah. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. All right. When so. COVID is over. Oh, of course, of course. Sure, when when sure. all this when all of this is over. Yeah. For sure. All right. Yeah. So uh, this has been episode number fifty. I'm your host Parker, and I'm Ray, and we will see you soon. Bye, guys. <laughs>